The final control groups located in the Output Settings Control Pane give you some extra features for your gallery. So the first one is Cool Iris, and to enable Cool Iris support, we simply tick this checkbox. Cool Iris is a plugin that individual users can install into their web browser of choice that allows them to view images and multimedia content on the web using the Cool Iris interface. So for more information and to download that for yourself, you can go to cooliris.com. Um, the plugin is available for Firefox, Safari, Internet Explorer, Google's Chrome, there's even an iPhone app, and you can download uh, the browser plugin here on the main page by hitting this big yellow button. So let's take a look at a gallery that has been published with Cool Iris support enabled. And as you can see, it looks just like any other high slide gallery. Um, except that when we mouse over the thumbnail images, we get this little icon appearing in the lower left-hand corner of the thumbnail. So if we click away from this icon on any other part of the thumbnail, it's going to enlarge that image using high slide and give us the standard high slide slideshow interface. Now if we go back to our thumbnail grid and this time click on that icon, it's going to launch our gallery using Cool Iris, and this allows visitors to peruse your images uh, in this neat 3D wall that allows them to pan around. Um, they can click on images to enlarge them. They can use the arrow keys to navigate around. Um, it's pretty neat. And if your visitor has Cool Iris already installed on their computer, it's something they probably like to use. And so it's nice just to give them the option um, by having that enabled on your image galleries. When Cool Iris is launched, it also launches the gallery, or the Cool Iris interface, rather, in its own tab or uh, browser window, so that if we close that out, it returns us right back to the original gallery um, on your website. So that's Cool Iris, pretty neat stuff. Jumping back into Lightroom, the next control group is Google Analytics. If you'd like to track traffic on your pages or on your website, um, it's already set up for you. All you need to do is enable Google Analytics by hitting this checkbox, then go to your Google Analytics account, copy your web property ID code from the dashboard, and paste it here. So that's all there is to it. This gallery is now ready to go with Google Analytics. Um, the final control group is advanced options. Um, and this is mostly here for web designers, for people who have some experience uh, writing their own code for web pages. Um, the only option here that's really sort of for everybody is this last checkbox, which is disable right click. So, as you probably know already, um, when you're on the web and you right click, you can bring up this menu uh, that allows people to view source code on a page or um, even download your images. A lot of people don't like this. So you can disable this menu simply by enabling that checkbox. And now when people right click on the page, that menu will not appear. Now this is not a 100% safe way of protecting the content on your page. Um, there are ways around it. People will still be able to download their images. They will still be able to view the source code of your pages. They'll just have to try a little bit harder. So all this does really is, uh, it doesn't even prevent, it just sort of discourages the casual downloading of images. Um, if they really want those images though, again, this can be gotten around. It's not a fail safe protection measure. So the option is there, use it if you'd like. Um, the final things here in the advanced options, again, are really intended for web designers. If you have a snippet of JavaScript that you really like to use in your pages for whatever purpose, um, you can paste that here either into the document head or at the foot of the document just before the closing body tag. Now Lightroom does process every piece of code on the page and so it's possible that it might misinterpret your JavaScript and reinterpret that as Lua, um, which would process out a lot of flawed code that would result in errors. Um, but it's worth a shot. If you have a snippet of JavaScript, you can paste it in here. It might work, it might not. But if it does work, you can then save that snippet of code with your template here in Lightroom, and it'll be easy to recall and export with your galleries. 
um, anytime you want to do that. So that's the JavaScript. Um, this other one allows you to add customized CSS to the head of the document. You can use this either to define your own rules or to override the rules being created by the web engine. So um, the best thing is to go into a text editor and then you can write your own code. You do need to include the HTML style tag. Just like that. And then you can go ahead and start putting in some custom CSS. So for example, if I wanted to put some letter spacing uh, between the letters in my menu items, I could target that CSS selector to do that. So I'm just going to paste that into here hit return, and if you watch the menu items, you'll see that now they're more spaced out than they were before. So again, it's better to write that in a text editor than copy and paste it here. There's uh, lots of things you can do by inputting your own custom CSS, um, and you'll see that some of the web templates I distribute from the, from the turning gate uh, include some custom CSS for various effects. So, uh, Again, this is the stuff that's really intended for web designers. If you don't understand this or you don't know how to use it, it's probably not for you. But if you do know how to use it, it's there and you can do lots of neat things with it. So that wraps up the Output Settings Control Pane. Thank you for watching.